Today we're going to be talking about an essential part of Node-RED and that's using variables. If you're new to Node-RED then check out some of my other guides like my beginner's guide to Node-RED but otherwise stay tuned. So we're going to talk about how to store data into variables, how to retrieve data from variables and also how to persist that data over Node-RED restarts. It's also going to include different contexts, so whether that's local or node context, whether that's flow context or the global context. So let's get started. There are two main ways of using variables in Node-RED, and that's with the change node and the function node. So firstly, we're going to take a look at the change node. Okay, so we're in Node-RED and I've created a new flow tab called variables. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add an inject node and then if we double click into that, we can see here, we can set message.payload to anything. So at the moment it's set to timestamp by default, but we've got flow and global, and they're the variables that we're interested in. So basically, when you define a flow variable, that means it's available with anything in this tab, in this flow. And if we do global, then it's available through any of the tabs within Node-RED. Now let's add a change node. And now we're going to add a debug node. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a variable to have a certain value. So if we connect all these up, and if we go into this change node, you can see that you can set any variable. So we want to set a flow variable. So if we call it flow.test, and we're going to set the value just as a string at the moment, and say yes, and then under the debug node, we want to see the whole message. So we change this to complete message. So now that I've deployed this, we'll press this button and you can see a message has come through with payload of time, but that's not what we're interested in. We're interested in this flow.test variable. So what we can do is, if we go up to the menu up here and you see this drop down, there's context data. And then this will show you everything that's in the variables. So if I refresh this flow, you can see there's a variable called test and yes. And here what you can do is you can press refresh to see the latest value or you can press delete on the right hand side or you can copy the value. Now to prove that that variable has actually been stored correctly we're going to do another part of the flow. We're going to copy this inject node and reuse that and we're going to reuse another debug node and then if we double click into the inject node Instead of setting message.payload to a timestamp, we're going to set it to flow.test, which is our variable. Then in theory, this should be usable now within this flow. So if I connect this up to the debug node, debug3, then we should see that it contains the text yes. So let's give that a go. We're going to go up here to debug messages, clear these messages out, deploy, and then press this. And you can see here that it's got yes as the payload. So it successfully stored it. Now that we've covered the basics with the change node, saving string data, we're now going to look at dictionaries where you can save multiple pieces of data into one object. This is useful because it means that you don't have to have lots of different variables for related things. So to save things into a dictionary is very similar. So let's open up the change node and make a couple of changes. So if you click here, this is the data type of the thing that you want to store in the variable. So at the moment it's set to string, but you can set it to number, boolean, so true or false or you can set it to JSON. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to have it as a JSON object where we can store multiple things in one variable. So this is how you structure a dictionary to store multiple pieces of information. So we've got text one, which is storing hello world, and text two, which is storing hello subscribers. You can also press format JSON here and it will format it in the way that looks a bit nicer. Let's press done, done again, and now let's try that. So now if we press that to save it and go back to context data, and then let's refresh this variable, you can see here now that it's got an object and it's got two pieces of information, text one and text two that you can select separately. So we can use those separately in this other part of the flow here. So instead of flow.test, we could do flow.test.text1. So by putting the dot notation here means that you can access things within the object. So let's try that and see if it just extracts hello world. Go back to the debug messages, deploy. And here we go, you can see that the payload has got hello world in it only. So we've managed to save multiple things within an object, but then extract certain pieces out. 
Now that we've gone through a change node example, I could take you through a function node example, but I think instead it's worth going through the persistent storage. And that's because you might never have a need to use a function node, whereas storing variable data across different restarts of Node-RED is probably going to be quite useful. We just need to make a couple of changes in the config file and restart Node-RED. Okay, great. So we're storing some data into variables and then we're accessing it later on in the flow. What happens if Node-RED restarts? Then we're going to lose all that data under context data. This will all get blanked out. So what we need to do is, is we need to actually amend a configuration file of Node-RED itself. Now I'm using the Node-RED add-on for Home Assistant, so I can easily access the configuration file. It's called settings.js. If you've got a separate Node-RED instance, then you'll have to find that yourself. So I'm using Visual Studio Code to access the file and you can see here it's settings.js. In Home Assistant's instance it's under the config folder so you've got config node red settings.js and then what you need to do is, is you either need to find a section called context storage and you might need to add to it or if it doesn't exist at all you need to add to it. So I'll add in the description exactly what you add but it's fairly simple you can see it's just this here. So this is basically creating a context and saying I want to store it on the local file system rather than just in memory. So once you've saved this file, you are going to need to restart Node-RED. And then after that, you should be able to save data and it will persist across restarts. One thing to note is that these changes are not stored automatically, unfortunately. They're only stored to disk every 30 seconds. So if you are changing variables quite often, then just note that the latest data in those variables might not be accurate during a restart if you're changing them a lot. Whereas if you're just saving them every now and again, then it's likely that this is going to be very useful to you. So assuming that you can now persist data across restarts of Node-RED, you're possibly going to need to sometimes delete stuff out those variables. So what we can do is, is we can use this change node for that as well. So instead of set, you can actually use delete. So if I copy this node here, you can see at the moment we've still got data in here. Let's just refresh that and make sure. Yeah, and copy these. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to delete and then say delete flow.test. So it should delete everything out of those variables. Let's deploy and press this and then refresh over here. And you can see test is now undefined. So there's nothing stored in that variable anymore. So now let's put together what we've learned so far. So what I've done here is, is I've created another flow and I've also created a dummy entity in Home Assistant just so that we can toggle this switch on and off and then in Node-RED it's going to look for this state change. So we're using a state change node here and all it simply does is we've got a change node and it sets global.homeassistant switch to the payload and the payload in this state will be the state of the switch. So every time the switch state gets changed in Home Assistant, then it should update this global variable with the state of the switch. And note that this time we've used global rather than flow, because what I'm going to do is once we've saved it in this variable, is we're going to access it from this other flow that we had before. So what I've created here is, is I've got an inject node, but with an inject node, you can set it to run at an interval. So every 10 seconds. And then I've got a debug node, which is going to output the result every 10 seconds. So you can see in this inject node, I've set the payload to be global.homeassistantswitch, which is the variable from the other tab. Now, all we need to do is enable this debug here by pressing that, and then it should start putting messages in here. So there you go. You can see at the moment it's showing payload is off and the switch is off. If I change this to on, and then we wait a few seconds and then it should send a message of payload on. There we go. So hopefully now you know how to use variables across the different flows. So now we're going to take a look at the function node. We can store data into variables and retrieve it from variables just like the change node, but instead we use some JavaScript to do it. I personally don't use this very often because I like using change nodes because it makes more sense in the flow and it's easier to see what's going on. But there's certainly a lot of situations where it might make more sense to store it in a function node. So let's take a look. Okay, so now on to the function example. So let's drag in the function node and we want an inject node again just to kick it off and a debug node, link them all up. And then let's add some information to here. So if we take our change node example where we set flow.test, then we can do the same in the function node and it's quite simple to do. So we just need to do flow.set and then the name of the variable, so in this case test, and then the value we want to store. 
Now that's all we're going to add and we're going to run it and see if it stores it into that variable. Now if we go back to the context data again and refresh this and you can see test has got hello world in it. Let's just change that and prove that it is working. And there we go. So to demonstrate retrieving data from variables using the function node, we're going to copy and paste this function node and add it as the next node. Open it up and instead of set, we're going to do flow.get. Now, of course, we need to do something with this data that we've retrieved from this variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to store it into a local variable within this function. So what I've done here is I've retrieved information from this variable, I've then saved it to message.t, and that means then in the message there should be a variable called t, which will have that information in. So let's deploy this, run it, go back to the debug messages, and you can now see within the message objects we've got a key value pair of t and the hello world from the test variable. You can of course do the same with global variables as well. So instead of flow, we just change it to global. And now you can see here, we've also got a global variable called test with that data in as well. And that's separate to the flow variable. So the final thing to talk about is what's called the local or the node context. So I've done an example here already. So at the top here, you can see that under node, there's no variables. And what I've done is, there's another similar flow with a function node. Now if I double click into this, you can see I've defined a variable called L and I'm getting a context variable called local var. So a context variable is only available within this node. If the context variable hasn't been set, then it sets it to hello. So that's what these two pipes are for here. And then the next line says, append something to the L variable. So store whatever's in L already, and then append hello again at the end. And then we're going to set the context variable local var to whatever is in L. So now if I press this, inject, and then refresh this. Uh, we need to select the node first. Then you can see it's put hello, hello again. And then if I press it again, so we run the flow again basically, then you should see that it updates and adds another hello again. And that will keep doing that. There's obviously more useful use cases for this. I, to be honest, it's another thing I don't really use very often myself, but there's definitely use cases where this could be very handy. There is an example in the documentation where it shows using this as a counter to know how many times this function node has been run. Well, hopefully this video has given you all the information you need for storing data and retrieving data from Node-RED. And if you want to learn more about Node-RED, then check out some of my other videos. I've got a Node-RED playlist. Well, that's it for today. So please consider subscribing and liking the video if you enjoyed it. And thanks until next time.